Hey guys, I got a brand new video for you today, and today we're looking at the new 2016 slash 2017 MacBook Pro, 15 inch space gray with touch bar, no more normal USB ports or an SD card reader. So let's get into the unboxing. All right, so jumping right into the touch bar, since that's the newest feature of the new MacBook Pro, you can open up Safari and you will actually see all your frequently used websites here as well as your bookmarks. And basically you just click on whatever site you wanna to go to and it'll launch it. Now you still have access to all your frequently used settings that you used to have in the old MacBook Pro from the old keyboard, like changing your volume and brightness and things like that. And it's pretty easy to do right from the slider. Another cool thing is if you have iTunes open, you can actually change the song and move the playhead to anywhere in the song right from inside the touch bar. And you can change the brightness the same way that you would change the audio with the slider. You still have access to the brightness of the backlit keys, turning them up and down. And this keyboard actually has individual backlit keys so there's no weird bleed like the old keyboards. It gives you a really nice clean cut key. So I'm assuming that apps will take more control of the touch bar in the future, but right now there's only a handful of apps that actually work. And Photoshop's one of them. You can actually change your brush size and change layers and different layer properties and stuff like that right from the touch bar. I don't really find this too fast because I already know the hotkeys for most of this stuff, but it's kind of cool to see what they're doing with it. And obviously in the future, there'll be more apps that control it. Um, one feature I thought was cool is that you could actually see your undo steps and go back and change them right off the touch bar. Now from all the demos that we've seen, uh, Final Cut Pro actually takes advantage of the touch bar. Being able to move around the timeline and stuff like that's pretty cool. And again, some of the features like trimming and different things that you know the hotkeys for already actually can work with the touch bar. Alright, so hopefully that gives you a better understanding of how the touch bar works and how it works in some of the apps. And to be honest, I kind of feel like it's a little bit gimmicky because I already know the hotkeys to pretty much all of those programs. And when I find myself trying to use the touch bar, um, you'll make adjustments and then you actually have to close out the adjustment to get back. And that doesn't save any time. So honestly, uh, unless they start coming out with some special features on it and certain apps only can use the touch bar that aren't already assigned to a hotkey, then maybe I could see it being pretty cool. But right now, it's to me, it's kind of gimmicky. All right, so let's talk about the screen because to me, the screen is honestly one of the best screens I've ever seen on a laptop. And uh, it retains the same resolution as last year's MacBook Pro Retina. So that's 2880 by 1800. But uh, the contrast levels and brightness on this monitor are super bright. Uh, they've upped it to 500 nits. So when I crank this up, it's like almost, it almost hurts my eyes to be honest. But uh, that's pretty good if you want to see stuff outside and you're working outside and you're trying to counteract the amount of brightness that's outside. Super bright, good contrast levels, good viewing angles, and it has 99% sRGB. So if you're into color grading or photo editing and stuff like that, you're going to get like the top best colors that you're going to get out of a screen. And they also slim down the bezels on the edges. So they've actually been able to shrink the laptop down a little bit, but retain the exact same 15.4 inch screen. All right, so next I wanna talk about the keyboard and it's a little bit controversial. A lot of people don't like it and some people do like it. And honestly, after using it for a little bit, uh, it was kind of weird getting used to. The keys are very shallow and they have this new butterfly style mechanism that allows it to have like an even pressure. And the keys feel nice and solid, but they don't really have much travel. And comparing it to my old MacBook Pro, uh, you can definitely tell that the travel is quite a bit less compared to the old keys. And to me, the old keys kind of feel spongy now and I actually really like that keyboard. Okay, so next you can't avoid the unnecessarily massive trackpad and uh, this thing's huge. Like it really doesn't need to be that big, probably double the size of the old trackpad. The only thing that I could see that this could be necessary to have the size is if they eventually allow you to use the Apple Pencil on it and you can use it like a tablet. I find that I'm like typing kind of like in a weird 
claw type way so that my palms don't hit it. And uh, the early reviews were saying that there is not very good palm rejection and you'll end up clicking on stuff. But uh, maybe because this has been out for a while now, they've been able to update that. And actually didn't find my palms hitting it and clicking on things that I didn't want to click on. It's, it's really big. It's bigger than my iPhone 7 and it's crazy. I don't, it really doesn't need to be that big, but uh, it's the new Force Touch trackpad. So besides all these new features, physically they've made the laptop quite a bit thinner and removed all the ports basically. So all the normal ports that you would use in every single day life are gone. And now they've got four USB type C Thunderbolt 3 ports on this thing. And um, yeah, hashtag bag of dongles. You basically got to carry around a bag of dongles with you. I have five different dongles and they allow me to actually do all the things that I want to do. It's kind of annoying. And honestly, I think that USB-C is more of a universal port. It can plug in any way. You can charge through it. Uh, you can run video through it. You can do Thunderbolt through it. You can do USB type 3.1. Um, pretty much anything that you can do out of a port will work through this port. And it's, it's kind of nice. And I guess Apple's kind of paving the way for the future so that more companies start making USB type C devices. One more thing is that the speakers on this laptop are super loud and clear, so take a listen. So just for kicks, I thought I'd show up beside my old MacBook Pro. You can see the space gray here. You can actually see how much thinner the bezels are compared to the old MacBook and how much actual thinness there is in the overall laptop. All right, so enough about the physical stuff. Uh, you guys came here to see how well it performs. And I'm not going to do a whole skew of benchmark charts and stuff like that. Honestly, I don't think it's really worth it. Um, I did a lot of real world stuff and I mainly bought this laptop for video editing. And uh, the first test that I could kind of show that's sort of a benchmark is Blackmagic Disk Test. And this thing's cranking out almost two gigabytes a second. And that's a really, really fast SSD. Uh, this is an M.2 NVMe drive. And it might be one of the fastest in a laptop. Don't quote me on that, but it's, uh, it's really snappy. And yeah, I basically bought this thing for 4K video editing as a mobile station when I'm not here at the office using my editing PC. And um, that's basically the only test I'm going to talk about because... As far as a computer that can run Photoshop and Lightroom and things like that, this is gonna be like as good as it gets. So you don't really need anything better than this. But when it comes to video editing, you really need a good computer with an awesome video card. And this computer was custom made with the uh, Radeon Pro 460 uh, four gig video card. And that's the only thing I upgraded on it. I kept the same CPU. But what I wanted to do for my first test was drop in some 4K video and edit a video on this laptop and see how well it performed in the timeline. And then I wanted to take that exact same finished video project and export it between this laptop, this video editing PC, and my 2012 MacBook Pro and see how fast it actually is. So all three systems have the exact same export settings. It's a 40 megabit per second output, 4K H.264, and take a look at the results. That's what I expected. I expected the video editing PC to finish first, this to come in second, and then the old MacBook Pro to come in third. But I actually couldn't believe how poorly the old MacBook Pro did compared to this. I know they don't have the exact same CPU, but they have the same gigahertz. So that's an i7 2.6 gigahertz. And this is a newer i7 2.6 gigahertz. But um, obviously this is the Skylake version. And I think that is Haswell. It might even be older than that, I'm not sure. There's obviously a massive improvement in uh, thermals and power delivery to this CPU that that one doesn't have because when I'm editing 4K video, that thing gets massively hot. And I have a feeling that's why it was so slow is because um, it was thermal throttling, whereas this system could run full turbo boost and not have a problem. Okay, so export times are good, but I wanna talk about timeline editing and that's where I kind of have a few issues. Um, this laptop to me is really underpowered for the price. If you edit in Final Cut Pro, you're not going to have a problem. Final Cut Pro runs really well. And if you watch any of the reviews, they're pretty much all talking about Final Cut Pro and how fast it is. But when you're editing 4K video in Premiere, the timeline is not smooth. It's very laggy. Uh, it's 
kind of annoying and it makes editing really not that fun and almost unusable for the most part. But, uh, you know, I, I was editing at about one eighth quality and it was just lagging and stuttering. And for me, I, I don't know, it's just, it's not fun compared to editing on my Beast video editing computer. So then I got my friend Ben to come over with his 2017 uh, Razer Blade and I actually told him not to buy this and to get the Razer Blade because he wanted to be able to edit red footage on it and I already knew that this computer would not be able to handle that and he uses Premiere as well. So he brought over his Razer Blade and uh, take a look at the results. So this is the same project and export settings I used before in the previous test but now doing it against the Razer Blade. Fans go. So after seeing those results, I was pretty disappointed because I didn't think it was going to be that much better and that computer just rips through 4K video like it's nothing and it has a GTX 1060 in it. So I think that if you guys uh, edit in Premiere Pro, you might want to look at that laptop instead of this new MacBook Pro. I feel like if Steve Jobs was still alive today, that he would probably put a GTX 1060 in this computer. So I went back to editing a bunch of 4K video on this laptop, trying to get through it, and I was trying to actually edit the unboxing for this video on here, and uh, I had my intern working with it, and he was having a lot of issues, and it's just super annoying working with this laptop trying to edit 4K video. So I was like, what if I tried Final Cut? I mean, everyone's going on and on about how good Final Cut runs on this laptop. So I haven't used Final Cut since Final Cut 7, and I know they came up with Final Cut 10, and it looked kind of like iMovie, so I was like, I don't really want to use that. And uh, anyway, now they're up to 10.3, and they've changed it again. So when I opened it up, I almost didn't even know what to do, but I wanted to edit the exact same project that I did in Premiere on all those tests and see how much better it ran in Final Cut. So I spent the entire day I was watching tutorials and trying to figure out how to use it and I ended up actually editing the entire video and uh, timeline smoothness was amazing. Uh, editing was actually a breeze on this thing and I almost didn't really hear the fans come on like they did in Premiere and uh, that's pretty wild. So it's obviously massively optimized for Final Cut and this number is gonna shock you. So I exported the video and it only took one minute and 40 seconds. So that crushes my video editing PC using Premiere. So if you work with Final Cut Pro, this laptop is definitely gonna be amazing for you. I don't use Final Cut. I don't plan on ever using Final Cut because it's just, I don't, I don't know. I don't like it as much as Premiere. So you'll obviously get awesome performance out of it if you work with Final Cut. So then I was kind of sad and I was like, well, this is a $4,000 laptop that can barely run Premiere. So what should I do? So the next logical thing was put Windows on it and see what happens. So I installed Windows through Bootcamp and I installed Premiere up on Windows and I couldn't believe the results. I started editing 4K video on Windows through Boot Camp on Premiere and I was able to play back the footage in full quality. Sometimes I had to drop it back to half, but I was able to edit video on Windows with the MacBook Pro way better than Mac OS. So now I'm kind of mad because I'm like, I have to use Windows in order to run Premiere or I have to use Final Cut if I want to use Mac OS. And I don't want to do either of those things. So maybe this laptop's not really for me. All right, so these are my final thoughts, putting all my Premiere Pro issues aside. They removed MagSafe off this thing, so it doesn't charge through a dedicated power port. It charges through one of the USB Type-C ports, which is kind of annoying because it takes up one of the ports and then you're left with only three. Um, you can use dongles where it splits it off, but that's the next thing. You literally have to walk around with a bag of dongles everywhere with you because you never know when you're gonna run into a situation where someone hands you a USB drive and you can't use it. So you need to pretty much always have a normal USB to USB Type-C dongle with you at all times because that's gonna happen. That's already happened to me already. And another thing that's annoying is the removal of the SD card slot. Cameras are gonna be using SD cards for a long, long time. Apple's not innovating by removing that. You're gonna always have to have an SD card reader and it's gonna to need to be a USB type C one or carry around another dongle and use your SD card reader through normal USB. And honestly, I feel like that's a big mistake because they're aiming this computer at creative professionals and most of those creative professionals have cameras and most of those cameras have SD cards. Actually, all of those cameras have SD cards. So I don't know really what they're doing. But honestly, when it comes to the benefits of the system, you get an awesome screen, a decent keyboard, a really nice trackpad. It's thin and light. You get decent battery life out of it. I'm not gonna say it's amazing. Um, I averaged between 
six to seven hours. I'm not getting the peak performance out of it. I think they said 12 hours or something like that or 10, I can't remember. But you're not gonna get that much life out of this thing. And if you're working it hard, like video editing or Photoshop, it's gonna go way down like to like three to five hours or something like that, especially if you're editing 4K video because this computer is working its guts out in Premiere trying to run 4K video and it, it, just, it, it just kills the battery really fast. Honestly, I'm gonna skim over the touch bar because I don't see any real benefits to it right now. It's just a, a separate screen for emojis when you're doing iMessage with your friends. And uh, it, I mean, I, I guess it does have a few functions. Like if you're inside of Photoshop and you want to switch over to iTunes, you can you can do that inside of the touch bar without actually having to leave the program. So I guess that's some kind of a benefit. I think that down the road, everything is going to eventually switch to USB Type-C. And when it does, this computer is going to be future-proof. But for now, you're going to have to carry around dongles with you everywhere. And uh, you're just going to have to get over it. I've got over it and I'm kind of used to it now. So that's just the way it is. If you edit 4K video, or it might even be able to handle 6K video, but if you edit that in Final Cut, this laptop is going to be amazing for you. It handles it no problem. Uh, if you're a photo editor or you are into development and stuff like that, the screen's amazing. And, you know, this computer is set up for people like that, minus the SD card reader. But I think that you're going to really like this computer. At the end of the day, it's stylish. It's got awesome build quality. The hard drive is super fast in it. And, you know, Macs have good resale value. So, you know, like a couple years down the road, um, you, know, you know, the computer costs a lot right now. And that might be something that you're worried about. But think about it this way. You buy a MacBook Pro, two years from now, you're going to be able to still sell this thing for probably 1500 bucks if it doesn't get all scratched up. And uh, that's something to keep in mind because once you sell it, you know, you get a little bit of your money back. But yeah, when it comes right down to it, the system isn't powerful enough for me. It's missing a lot of ports. It's tough because they aim this MacBook at creative professionals and they got a lot of things right. But at the same time, the things that they could have done right, they just didn't do. So weak video card, no normal USB ports, no SD card. It just kind of is weird that they would do that. Like at least give us an SD card slot. I'm okay with USB type C. I know it's gonna change to that. So I don't know, maybe this computer is just not for me. Anyway guys, thanks for watching this review. I know I really just talked about Premiere mostly, um, but like I said, it's the most CPU, GPU intensive program you're gonna run on a laptop for the most part. And if it can't do it, and it's a $4,000 laptop, it's not good enough. Anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice, and I'll see you in the next one.